Well, thanks for joining us today. Uh, this is Dan Meyer with RCR Wireless News, and today I'm joined by Michael Howe, who is the uh, Product Marketing Director at Ixia, to talk a bit about the company's play in the virtualization space. Hey, Michael, thanks for joining us today. We, we appreciate it. No problem. Great to be here. Great. Well, maybe give a little, I guess, a little background on the company for those who might not know much about, uh, about Ixia. Absolutely. A real quick background. Um, we've been around like nearly 20 years now, approach, I think we're over 18 years, and uh, kind of the DNA of the company is really known to be a test and measurement company. Mm -hmm. um, but within the last several years, we've made some acquisitions and we've moved into other areas, including security tests, as well as monitoring, where um, we made some acquisition into, into the packet broker space and uh, TAPS by the acquisitions of Anui and NetOptics. So now we're, we're really more of a lab to live story where we're in the lab and the, the pre-deployment testing. As you go to migrate to the lab, we're in the assessment phase and um, kind of turn up and service activation phase. As it goes live, we're in the monitoring. So we, we kind of have a full play from lab to live. Got it. And obviously, you, know, you guys do have a long history in the testing space. Obviously, it seems like a great way to kind of have this inside of what's happening in the networks. And obviously, as networks move towards virtualization, it seems like you guys have a pretty good in there. At least you're knowing what's, you guys have a history of knowing what's going on there. So I'm sure that helps with yeah. your move towards virtualization as telecom operators move in that space as well. Yeah, you know, it's uh, the test area is really a fun spot because we get to really see where the rubber meets the road, how products are being developed, you know, in the case of SDN and virtualization, how real things are. And um, yeah, it's definitely a fun and in, in those two particular areas, SDN and NFV, it's, it's an exciting time in networking again, which is, which is obviously fun for a test company. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I always find it interesting to interview you guys who do other test space just because, again, you guys do have this, this great insight into things. And it seems like always, get, at least as a reporter, always get some great insight of what's actually happening out there. And so it's always yeah. a great insight there. But, but like you said, obviously with the virtualization move, I mean, I guess how do you guys play in that space more specifically, you know, obviously with NFE and SDN, getting a lot of traction with telecom operators. Uh, it's been kind of the, the new buzzword over the past 12 months or so. Uh, what's Ixia bring to the table when it comes to those, those, those moves live telecom operators? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, um, it's a big challenge for the, the network uh, equipment manufacturers because as they are pressured to virtualize as you know in 2012 the um the 13 carriers banded together and produced a white paper and they really kind of broke nfv onto the scene in terms of a buzzword right network function virtualization and um it wasn't really anything too new in the sense that you could run a router in software and you could run it on an x86 platform so running a network function in software on generalized hardware was not really a new concept but the fact that carriers were saying, I want to leverage what is you know, cloud infrastructure and I want to run all these network functions on that infrastructure and I want it to be carrier grade. And you know, the demand list they put together was pretty steep. So it really squarely put the pressure back on the network equipment manufacturers and it's become a race to see who can virtualize, who can virtualize with performance and scale and then, you know, who can take that, that technology and actually have something you can build services on top of, which involve the, the orchestration and the, uh, you know, the ability to build something end to end. And so, you know, companies and equipment manufacturers are kind of scrambling to put the pieces together because it's not just having a virtual function. It's that function working on uh, a host of servers, which then in turn work on various hypervisors and work with the various networking technologies to tie these things together. It's a lot of interconnected pieces. And so through either acquisition or partnerships or ecosystems, these pieces are kind of coming into play. And you know, more specifically where Ixia plays is that we have the relationship in the labs with the equipment manufacturers. We have the relationships with the carriers in their evaluation labs where they're, they're looking at these technologies. So we see it from both sides. And, you know, initially, um, like I would say our traditional equipment were being used. So kind of our traditional physical test systems are being connected to the physical ports instead of a router or a firewall to NICs of a server. So our, our traditional kind of testing equipment still comes into play greatly, right? And for performance and for high fidelity testing, that's still usually the way you end up for scale and performance and that area of testing. But when you get into um, when you get into virtualization, there's so many variables of that NFVI, the network virtualization infrastructure, with the compute, the hypervisors, the the different resources you can allocate. If you're turning on or off acceleration, I mean, the number of variables is really uh, kind of add creates exponential test cases. 
Mm-hmm. So what, what, our care, what our customers have been pressuring us for, and for us, we kind of had a good jump on it, is for actually virtualized test equipment. Mm-hmm. They're saying, I need to get through a lot more testing cycles. I can cover a lot virtually. I'm developing my product virtually. Why can't I test it virtually? And then when I go to scale and performance, move it towards the, the physical side. And so quite a few years ago, we had virtualized our uh, kind of core test capabilities. Mm-hmm. It wasn't really heavily product marketed, but now um, we've launched it to the market as our platform is IXVM. And on it, we virtualized our, our kind of flagship applications like IX Network for Layer 2, Layer 3, IX Load for Layer 4, Layer 7, and most recently, uh, our acquisition of Breaking Point, we virtualized Breaking Point as well. So now what we call them our virtual editions of the, our applications. And so that's, that's where we've gone. Um, and then through the monitoring side, mm-hmm. our acquisition of Anui, Anui had developed a virtual tapping technology because you know what you end up with is a lot of communication happens virtual machine to virtual machine and doesn't actually leave the server. Mm-hmm. So how are you able to tap into the traffic or monitor it? And so we developed something called the, the phantom virtual tap. So when you look at the Ixia product line, there's kind of a whole another, you know, let's say leg to, to the story where it's, we, we sit in the virtual space as well. And then one last piece, um, again, we have quite a few things out there is <laughs> we have a lightweight software endpoint we've had for a long time called Chariot, IX mm-hmm. Chariot, we've branded it. And um, it's kind of been this um, very useful tool because in test areas like Wi-Fi or others where you just need to put an endpoint on something and and be able to generate traffic to and and from it, Mm -hmm. Chariot is a great fit. So therefore, Chariot is a great fit with NFV as well, especially when you're looking at the service activation phase of a a service chain where you have multiple functions, you're trying to validate end-to-end you can deploy Chariot end to end and then just run traffic through your service to ensure it's up and working. And those Chariot endpoints can be embedded on a host, on a virtual machine, on, a, on even like hardware as well. So um, it's become a very nice flexible tool that the carriers are looking at and even wrapping orchestration around for deployment of service activation and testing because the, the line is getting blurred from lab to live where, you know, um, you're doing, changing things in production. The whole kind of purpose of NFV is you have an infrastructure that's completely agile. You can make moves and adds and changes dynamically. Well, when you make those changes, you may want to wrap test or verification cycles around them. And so Ixia technology offers that. So uh, I guess maybe touch a bit, I guess, on the, on the importance of service orchestration for this. And obviously you guys have a pretty wide platform. Uh, and it does seem like that, you know, again, with, with this move towards virtualization, Obviously, your, your testing background helps a lot because it does seem like this, there's this need for this continuously, almost near real-time monitoring of what's happening out there. And it seems like the orchestration aspect really ties in well with being able to monitor what's happening, uh, bring it all together uh, when you need to, you know, automate. And it seems like there's a, there's a, a part that you guys really seem to play a pretty key role and have the, the pieces in place, it seems, to really make this easier for operators and for the vendors out there. Yeah, you know, the, the orchestration piece is um, a really important piece that's, I'd say now getting lots of attention, Um, you know, in, in the lab, we, we just call it automation, but you know, what you're, what they're trying to build in the network service um, is the ability to actually automate IT processes, which is much more complex than just automating something or some individual function. So, you know, it, it really brings out a lot of complexities because, you know, the term orchestration means a lot of things to a lot of people. It's kind of like, if you just say SDN, but when you actually say, you know, NFV orchestration, I mean, you're talking about orchestration of network function virtualization, which entails a lot of components. You have the provisioning of the compute, the resourcing, resourcing uh, of that, meaning resource management and management pools. When that, uh, when that compute is uh, provisioned and a VM is uh, in- instantiated, you have the ongoing monitoring of that as well, right? And then... You know, you can't just have essentially one single virtual machine functioning. You need to typically have a service chain or you tie it into um, legacy physical equipment as well. So there's a whole component of the network infrastructure that needs to be coordinated as well. And so I think that the big challenge there is that there are a lot of options. Um, when you when you talk to most carriers, they talk about wanting or building off OpenStack. 
And um, OpenStack is, is a great piece of uh, technology because it has so many components. It has a component that can handle compute and, and talk to the network. However, um, it was built and developed as a, a cloud operating system for multi-tenancy clouds, right? So it really wasn't built for NIV. So it's kind of like, you know, you, if, if you've had a chance to play with it or your viewers have had a chance, it's, it's really quite of a complicated piece of software to use. And mm -hmm. on top of that, you know, just like if you go get Linux or a hypervisor, there's very di um, different distributions and each one is slightly different in the way it works and interacts. And I, I uh, did a quick count and I came up with more than 20 distributions of OpenStack. So even when you start speaking OpenStack and features and how to use it, it's very, very different distribution to distribution. And so what, where Ixia is, you know, really kind of hitting this head on is they obviously want orchestration and production, but we're really, you know, really promoting and, and working with our the engineers in the lab to say, you know, bring orchestration into your lab. You need, whatever you're planning on using in production, you really need to have the same infrastructure in place. And instead of kind of maybe deploying a VM manually and doing things, you know, you always kind of do things manually when you first are building a system that you're verifying. But to very quickly look to be wrapping those, uh, the integrated components for orchestration, because the more you can leverage that orchestration in your test infrastructure, the far fewer problems you'll have as you go to orchestrate into your production environment. And so, with our like virtual test uh, solutions, you know you can you can define a heat template in OpenStack that points to our um, VM images, which are test points. And while you're deploying, let's say a virtual router, you could deploy virtual test ports as well as configure the required networking for those test ports that we require. Mm -hmm. And you can even kick off automated tests. And so. You can begin to use this or orchestration technology in the lab. And again, you know, it's really a fundamental component of like what you're trying to do and you will speed up your process to go from lab to live. And so that's kind of what we're doing is we're integrating into the orchestration systems. We are partners on quite a few of the, the ecosystems out there. Um, like, you know, HP has uh, uh, Open NFV, mm -hmm. um, you have Alcatel Lucent's Cloud Band, mm -hmm. you have, you know, fairly big companies putting together ecosystems of compute, um, the, the virtualization layer, the orchestration, the virtualized networking, and all those things, all those puzzle pieces need to fit together. And so we're, we're really saying, you know, do it as close as you can in the lab as you would try to do in the live network. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. And at the end of the day, obviously, like you said, hopefully you got a good orchestration platform in place that can really tie these things together. And, and you know, so, so at the end of the day, the operator has something that actually works in the network. It's interoperable with different uh, vendors. Uh, it's a piece that they can actually use to make their networks more efficient, too. So that's obviously a, a big goal yeah. of all this, too. So. And it, it becomes a fundamental component of, like, how you're deciding to do your networking. A lot of the companies we're working with um, have an SDN strategy. So you have a controller uh, node that is handling networking provisioning. And they're beginning to try to interwork, you know, an orchestration system with uh, an SDN controller. And, you know, one of the most kind of well-known examples out there is open daylight based controllers have a plugin for OpenStack. Mm -hmm. So instead of trying to speak OpenStack down to all the network elements, a lot of elements out there don't have OpenStack plugins for like Neutron. So what you could do is speak OpenStack to a, an SDN controller, like an open daylight based controller, for example, and then let it talk to the network. And, you know, it, it's kind of like, you know, which project is going to move fast enough with the most features and still be stable. Um, the, the OpenStack purists will say, you know, all the feature, features is going to Neutron. The, you know, the SDN purists are saying, you know, have a very feature rich SDN controller that you just speak to through an interface or APIs from your orchestration layer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a, it's, it's a design choice and there's lots of trade-offs, but obviously there's a lot of investment happening in the SDN control layer. 